and thank you all for joining us today on, on we know, relatively short notice uh, to uh, announce that um, uh, today I'll be issuing an emergency order uh, declaring a state of emergency for the city of Columbia, South Carolina. For those of you um, uh, relatively new to, uh, no one's new to, 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 the, to the pandemic, and you've heard um, some of this language uh, in the not too distant past, uh, under state law, uh, the mayor of the city has the authority to declare a state of emergency. Uh, within 24 hours, uh, the city council must meet to confirm that state of emergency. Uh, city council will meet tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. And um, I fully expect uh, that we will uh, have the support of the city um, council in this in in endeavor. Uh, we're watching some amazingly difficult trends uh, emerge uh, that uh, leave each and every one of us uh, deeply uh, disturbed. Uh, after watching a, a significant suppression of the virus by uh, men and women who committed themselves to being vaccinated, um, an early robust testing strategy that the city was uh, actively involved in, along with so many different public and private sector and um, uh, public health driven uh, partners here in the city, we are again at a, a significant challenging point. Uh, the rise of the Delta variant has not only imperiled our public health with a much more contagious version of the COVID-19 uh, virus, but we've watched it rage through our community, a tenfold increase in infections just in the past month. The Delta variant, unlike the previous strands of the virus has shown not only an amazing ability to um, uh, infect um, all of us, but an incredible ability to infect our children. Uh, many of us shuddered as we read reports of our children's hospitals all across this country, including right here in our fair city, being at capacity with our children suffering from COVID-19 and other respiratory uh, ailments, along with all the other ailments, uh, many of which we're seeing make their way back into our common lexicon uh, because of this anti-vaccine um, movement and discussion that we're seeing across the country. Uh, children uh, dealing with um, chicken pox and whooping cough and uh, any number of different ailments. Uh, we're at a point right now where uh, there are several vaccines authorized for um, uh, emergency uh, use by the CDC and an increasing number of South Carolinians are taking advantage of that vaccine uh, and we need to see uh, see that number increase dramatically well over 70 percent to try and, and, and suppress uh, the incidence of this uh, virus. Regrettably uh, the virus the, the vaccines have not been approved for those under 12. Uh, in, uh, in the U.S. That means that in two weeks um, across this community, tens of thousands of young people uh, will be required to go back to school. Parents are legally required to send their children back to school. We have compulsory attendance laws in South Carolina. Thousands of dedicated, hardworking, committed teachers who have watched their lives be turned upside down because they've been pursuing their passion of wanting to educate our children, educate our babies, are facing an amazingly uncertain future as they decide to either pursue their passion of educating our children or to risk their lives by stepping back into the classroom. Uh, we have determined that uh, this amazing confluence of challenges uh, has put us into a position uh, where we must do what we think is necessary, and that is do everything possible, everything within our authority to protect the health, life, and safety of our families, of our children first, and the professionals who have dedicated their lives to providing for them. Uh, so, um, that's where we are. 
I will say this, um, I, I did reach out uh, to um, several elected officials today, spoke with leaders, appointed officials of, of, of both uh, Richland 1 and Richland 2, the director of the South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control, uh, uh, had, a, had a, a, a great conversation with our Attorney General and also with a number of other uh, public sector leaders to express the gravity of the matter before us and why we're acting and under what authority we're acting. It was clear to us, um, legal opinion from our legal staff, that we have the authority to do exactly what we're doing here today and we are fully prepared uh, to hold that position and fight that position all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. That's how strongly we feel about this. Um, uh, of course, uh, you know, I'm joined here by City Councilman Howard uh, Duvall and our City Manager, uh, Teresa Wilson. Um, and, um, you know, it, it seems like, yeah, a lot of times over the last year we've been standing in the gap. Uh, the city doesn't mind, city leadership doesn't mind uh, speaking up when, when we feel some things need to be said. And I will say this too, and I will wrap up my comments. I've been incredibly encouraged. Uh, by the uh, discourse I've had with a number of our friends and others who share different political ideas, different political opinions, who have different ideas about the vaccination process or masking. And I've found unanimous support in support of protecting our children. This is something we can all rally around. We can all support. Let's save our babies. Let's protect our babies. Let's protect the men and women who educate them every single day. And, and hopefully, we'll see no type of legal challenge to this action. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. Um, I'm Chris. looking at a note saying that no school districts or any of the schools may use any funds mm -hmm. to um, support sure. students. Sure, Chris. Yeah. Yeah, that is, yeah, Chris, that's the, um, that's the language from the proviso attached to the state budget this year. Um, our intention is to provide the mask. We will provide masks to, to the uh, 40 plus schools that fall into this definition. We're talking about elementary schools and middle schools uh, across the footprint of the city of Columbia. Most of those schools are in Richland 1. Uh, some of those uh, schools are obviously private. Uh, one school is in Richland uh, uh, 2. We, we hope and pray that we'll see other jurisdictions that, that um, uh, our Richland 1, Richland 2, Lexington, Richland 5 uh, uh, schools and, and the families affected uh, 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 by the very same situation might follow suit and we can find a uniform uh, regional uh, approach. So that is the language from the uh, proviso. This is clearly not in violation of that. And what, how do you expect to enforce this? Oh, our, our fire marshals, uh, just as they enforce the mass ordinance uh, for, for all of us adults will be deployed across the, uh, uh, across the school district, uh, checking in on, on schools and uh, and, and there will be a $100 fine for every violation attached to this. So we're, we're going to, uh, there's going to be accountability uh, uh, attached to this as well. Mayor, is there any thought of extending this again to other places in the city where people are gathering? You know, you know not, right, not right now. Uh, that, 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 was, that has not been robustly discussed by city council. And we're at a point right now uh, where uh, as much as it might cause uh, uh, many of us a great degree of consternation and frustration, um, adults are making decisions for themselves, uh, whether they be vaccinated, whether they be masked. Our children do not have that option. Uh, I think our, our goal has to be to continue to follow the data. And if, in fact, we continue to see the, um, uh, the Delta variant uh, rage through uh, this country the way that it is, particularly uh, across the American South where vaccination rights are not where they ought to be, uh, then everything's still on the table. We'll, we'll, we'll use uh, good data. Data gives you intelligence. Intelligence allows you to make good informed public health policy. Uh, so taking nothing off the table, that uh, um, and specifically is not on the table right now. Let me ask a follow up. Uh, after your remarks yesterday, we saw a lot of attention from some of the other community leaders in some of South Carolina's larger cities. Uh, have you been in touch with folks, you know, mayors in, in a Charleston or in Greenville? I mean, do you think this is something that, 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 that other municipalities might uh, we'll see. Uh, you know, in, in this space and, and, and others, um, the, the city has been uh, in the vanguard over the last several years. Our, our, our colleagues on city council, I want to say almost every vote we've taken has been unanimous. Uh, so this is, this is not a partisan issue or, or a regional issue. Uh, and we've had any number of conversations with leaders at the Municipal Association. As you know, Howard Duvall is the former executive director of the Municipal Association for many years. We spend a great deal of time with our colleagues 
at the conference just two weekends ago. Uh, and, uh, and this was very much a, a, an issue of discussion. Um, I, I did talk to, uh, talk to several mayors, in, including the mayors of, of, uh, of Greenville and Charleston, uh, about this. I have no idea what their intentions are right now, uh, but I hope and pray that we'll find um, more and more people following our lead. The um, the district has ultimate authority over the schools um, by virtue of, 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 of our of our constitution. Uh, the principals have the authority to run those schools, uh, so that that's where the authority will 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 will, will lie. Uh, our fire marshals, under the direction of um, Chief Jenkins, uh, will be uh, tasked with enforcing uh, the, the the ordinance as, as they have. We'll be common sense. We'll be we'll be thoughtful. We know that we're obviously working with children. Uh, and, and, and that will be our, our goal. But there will be accountability attached to this. And um, I, I just, I think it's so important, some of the questions I got from some of the parents as we were, uh, even as we were approaching the, 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 the podium, we wanna remove every sense of uncertainty uh, from your decision-making process. This is the law in the city of Columbia. Uh, this is the law, we intend to enforce it. We wanna give you the safety and security and, and sanctity of mind to understand that um, at least at those schools within our jurisdiction, and hopefully we'll be able to work closely with our neighboring jurisdictions, uh, uh, both in the unincorporated area of the county and other smaller um, uh, uh, towns, uh, to maybe between now and the beginning of the school year to find some uniformity. Uh, but in the schools, uh, and I've got a list of them right here, uh, we're talking about roughly 43 schools, public and private. Uh, this will be enforced. And the fine, how will that work? Will it be a fine on children? Will it be a fine? No, we're not finding we're not finding kids. No, no, this this is this is to the to the uh, uh, to the administrator, the adult uh, charged with it, uh, enforcing the law. No, we're not we're not we're not finding kids. Uh, no. What do you say to folks who say you know this is government overreach that you're you know you're requiring something that the governor is very clear shouldn't be required? Well, the governor does not. The, the governor has expressed his opinion that is not state law, uh, and and we respect his his effect his um, his ability to have his his own opinion. Government overreach, I mean, we live in the greatest democratic nation in the history of the world. Uh, the reality is that uh, we are a nation of laws, not of men. And if, in fact, we're going to maintain some degree of order, some degree of public health, if, in fact, we're going to preserve lives and livelihoods, we have watched uh, what this pandemic has done, not only to our lives, our public health, but also to our economy and the way that we live. If, in fact, we're not willing to act uh, to um, put things back on track, and I'm not sure what that says about us as a, as a, as a community, as a society, as a nation, as a state or a city. Uh, so um, to those who disagree, I, I, I respect their ability and right to disagree. Uh, we're going to continue to move forward to save lives and save livelihoods. Have you coordinated this with the school district at all? Because I, I, my, my understanding is under state law, the teachers would not be able to the, um, I have communicated with both, obviously, the two public school uh, superintendents uh, that are, I know are affected by this and made them um, uh, clearly aware of our intentions um, um, without uh, any uh, doubt. Um, so um, the, the last part of the question was what school teachers will not be able to enforce yes. the law. Well, that's not what the proviso says. The proviso, um, Proviso verbatim says no school district or any of its schools may use any funds appropriated or authorized pursuant to this act to require that its students and or employees wear a face mask at any of its education facilities. This prohibition extends to the announcement or enforcement of any such policy. So the reality is that prevailing legal opinion is that schools, is that the legislature cannot mandate schools not be allowed to require a mask, but they can withhold the associated money uh, there. This will not require uh, any funds appropriated by the legislature to enforce. We'll provide the mask, and now we're just asking everyone to comply with the law, and this is a law in Columbia. Can you explain the jurisdiction over private schools? It's not a public institution. Private schools in South Carolina have a lot of leeway. What authority do you have over private schools? If private schools call 911, please show up if private schools have a fire. Public sector uh, agencies show up as, as well. Um, this is a, 
It's a civil society where the laws of the public apply to every institution, public and private. Uh, there's a clear uh, exemption, just as, as when we uh, uh, did the mask ordinance last year uh, that, that speaks very clear to, to religious exemptions, and, and that's also stated in the executive order. And on uh, your conversation with Attorney General Wilson, how did that go? What did he say? When you it went well. Uh, Al and I, we, we've been friends a, 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 very, a very long time. We have some fundamental differences on any number of issues. Um, uh, but I, but I, I wanted to uh, give him the courtesy of knowing him, uh, him knowing exactly what we're doing and the rationale uh, for the decision making and uh, and that's what that conversation was it was it was a, it was a, it was a great courtesy conversation. Would this be a 60 day uh, emergency declaration if this gets approved? And, and I'm trying to remember what the uh, 61, so yeah, 61 61, 61 days is. I, I think the limit of our authority. So yeah. that, that sort of so this would be at least a 61 day mandate and then you'd have to revisit. I hope you know uh, honestly the hope and, the hope and prayer is that this is not an issue. You know, I mean, um, uh, the numbers don't seem to be uh, trending in that direction. However, um, I'd, I'd love if uh, at the, the first day of school, if um, uh, if this is a uh, something you know, deep in our rearview mirror, hopefully, uh, certainly after 61 days, it's um, it's not an issue. Uh, but um, but we'll monitor the data. We'll stay engaged. Uh, this is a this is a place. Uh, I'll, I'll say this, in, unless you have some more questions, where. Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, this is a place where I hope none of us want to be. Um, uh, we, we, we want everyone to rally together, to lock arm and arm, and do everything we can to suppress this virus. Uh, we ought not have to go into another academic year. I'm a father of two, of two school-age girls. Uh, both of them are teenagers. They've both been vaccinated. Uh, but they will both be showing up at school wearing masks uh, and um, doing everything they can to protect their health. We got to get through this. The only way we're going to get through it um, is, is if we do it together. Thank you. Those other teachers that were worried in summer here as well, what do you have to say to the teachers that are in high school and wear the mask and do not wear yeah. masks? Yeah, this, um, this is an emergency declaration and an ordinance that has been um, narrowly tailored uh, to address a very acute uh, challenge. What do you do for not only those that can't be vaccinated, but those that are also uh, voteless and, and voiceless, uh, and, and those are the children under under 12? Um, I would rather it also apply to uh, high schools. I, I think it's 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 more securely um, uh, the legal foundation, the, the 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 public policy argument is much more articulate as it relates to those who cannot yet receive vaccine. I would love to find some leadership at the, um, not just here on the local level, but on the state level and national level backing our play. Uh, this, this is a time we gotta put the foolish politics behind us and decide that we're gonna do everything we can to preserve lives uh, and, and hope and pray that we'll, uh, we'll find the support that allows us to not only deal with high school students, but college students and, and, and every single one of us. Mayor, uh, just in the time since you've answered that original question, people are still confused about the enforceability. Teachers texting me right now, wondering what what's going to do. Teach, teach, teachers will not be fined for wearing your mask, okay? Uh, the, 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 the CEOs of the schools will be held responsible. I fully expect, based on my conversations with our, um, our superintendents and other um, public policy leaders, that uh, they will comply with our, our, our local law. We love teachers. We will support teachers. We want to make sure that our teachers are able to remain healthy and, 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 and safe. Uh, those that uh, obviously um, uh, will not comply with the law, we'll deal with that when the, when the time comes. Uh, but uh, this, this, is, this, is, this is not meant to be an issue for teachers or, 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 or for our, our, our babies. We do expect parents to support our play. Uh, and, and if we have to find some other way to, to deal with it, this is, an, this is an evolving crisis as, as it has been for the last year and a half. We'll, uh, we'll evolve along with it. So to be clear, the fine would be whether the school administrator? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and, I, and, and, I, and I hope and pray that they will be empowered um, by their superiors to do the right thing. The school districts, I, I will tell you, our school district um, partners, our school district leaders, our school district commissioners, um, uh, have been on, on, on one accord, wanting the, app, the ability to make sure that they can keep schools safe. Uh, we've supported them for the last year and a half. We'll continue to support them. And we see this very much as a partnership. 
Um, so the goal is just to make it clear. Uh, this is our expectation. We expect uh, everyone within the four corners of the city of Columbia to abide by uh, this law upon passage uh, by, by city council tomorrow. This does not affect my children? It's not. It's not. Just to clarify, so this uh, definition, does it, does it or does it not include teachers and staff? Yeah. It, oh, absolutely does. Um, the facial covering shall be required by all faculty, staff, children over the age of two, and visitors. Uh, at all, in all public buildings at public and private schools or daycares whose purpose is to educate and or care for children between the ages of 2 and 14 and to slow the spread of the novel coronavirus uh, and the disease, disease COVID-19 within the city limits. Yeah. Wear your mask. If you can, please consider getting vaccinated. Um, let's do our part. Uh, this, is a, this is a journey we've been on much too long together. And it's the type of thing, a pandemic, we uh, obviously none of us have lived in one before, uh, uh, unless you're 103 years old. Uh, this is something we can only see our way out of together. Let's do it together. Thank y'all. God bless you.